All right, guys, so it is raining outside right now. And as you can see, we're in North Carolina. No longer are we in Las Vegas. And I actually have made it with my 2020 Tucson. And she just turned one years old with me, or one year old with me. So I wanna go ahead and do an update and give you guys a little bit of a one year review on this vehicle. I'm gonna get into the vehicle now just because it is windy and you probably hear it through the camera. So let's go ahead and hop in. And uh, here we go. So please excuse my interior ahead of time. I actually really have to wash it. And I'm not gonna lie, it's been kind of hard to find a car wash that's open on Sundays just cause that's really the only day I have off right now. But ultimately uh, I will go ahead and get that cleaned up and get this car ready and nice and clean on the inside. So how has this vehicle treated me over the years? As many of you guys who subscribe are subscribed to this channel know I am extraordinarily picky when it comes to my vehicles and any little hiccup that I have, I will usually make a big deal out of it and then get it fixed. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the hiccups that I have had with this Tucson. And I will admit that's the only hiccup that I've really had is the interior. The interior of this vehicle is an, a not bad interior. It's actually a pretty good interior, but you have to be careful because if you don't, you run into the issue of your interior actually actually uh, getting a very large amount of scratches on it. In fact, this, uh, little vi this little piece right here, this door panel, there's a little slight scuff mark there. There are a few scuff marks on the glove compartment. Actually, this was from my um, partner's class ring and I was just like, seriously, with not even a month in, but it was actually pretty funny. But unfortunately, if you do have bags, you will see some scuff marks such as the one that you see up here. And there is also one that's lower and that was actually from my lunchbox. So basically, um, Unfortunately, this vehicle does scuff and scratch very easily, and it's really hard to get, you know, it's really hard to fix that texture, so most of the time you end up leaving it. But the only thing I did not leave were the A-pillars. The A-pillars actually, both of them are not, ori not original whatsoever. I replaced this one once and this one twice because they did, they did have scratches on them, and I have no idea where it's, where it was from, but I do not deal with A-pillar scratches very well whatsoever. And uh, I actually ended up replacing them because it's distracting, especially if it's right in front of you right here. You're like, wow, look at that imperfection. How how awful. But otherwise, don't let, that don't let that specific detail deter you away from buying the vehicle. I am just a very picky person. But if that doesn't bother you, this Tucson is amazing. The interior is not too big, but it's not too small either. And a lot of people have complained that the rear end does have less room and they are right it does but you also have to understand what this vehicle is meant for this is an entry level suv and you this is really something that you know it's comfortable it's not too big and you can carry around some cargo with it i will admit do i wish i had more space sometimes yes but ultimately this vehicle served my needs when i moved here i had both the back seats down and i had the trunk cover removed and i also had was able to close the trunk completely i had this vehicle stuffed to the brim and it carried everything i needed to across the country for 2000 miles so it really didn't do a poor job and i will admit um it's it's a smaller space, but it's not something that's going to be super uncomfortable and you will not feel claustrophobic in this vehicle as everything is pretty far away from you um, compared to some cars that I have driven. Now, the gas mileage on this is not too great, and that's one hiccup that a lot of people will notice with this Tucson compared to other vehicles. The Tucson's um, gas mileage rating is not that good. It's 22 in the city and 28 on the highway if you have the 2.4 liter four-cylinder model, but it's not too bad. Um, getting onto the highway over time, it definitely evened out pretty significantly, and I did not have too much of an issue getting here and wasting a bunch of fuel. I actually kept my fuel cost down by just cruising, and it did a little bit worse than the Subaru did, but it wasn't horrific. Like, I definitely did not match the Subaru in terms of the gas mileage, but I didn't do a poor job. Most of the time, I was able to make it around 260 miles before I filled up from one quarter tank, while the Subaru did 260 miles in a half tank. But 
this vehicle starts dropping the gas tank very quickly and it ultimately starts to slow down around half a tank whereas the Subaru stays at full for a while and then ultimately starts dropping from there. So the way the gas the gas gauges work are a little bit different. This one starts going down almost right away whereas the Subarus will go down about 40 or 50 miles in. I do have 12,950 miles on it. Um, most of that was actually put on within the last three months. But yeah, this vehicle offers a lot of value and you can toggle through so many things. Even with this being the SEL trim, you can toggle through so many menus on here and actually set a bunch of settings. And on top of that, uh, I'm gonna go back here. You can set your parameters for let's say your lane safety. You have your active lane keep assist and you have your lane keep assist, hold on. Yeah, you have the ability to, uh, what was it called? Just set it to lane departure warning, your lane keep assist, and you also have your active lane keep assist where it will assist, it will basically uh, assist you pretty much all the time when it comes to, when it comes to some winding roads. So I'm actually going to change that because I actually would rather have the thing tell me where I'm going. And you can also set your forward end collision avoidance, uh, sensitivity and your rear cross traffic alert you can turn on and off these features but this thing has a lot of safety features that a lot of your lower trims actually don't have so it's really nice to see that just because they're taking safety into consideration and it's ultimately something that's going to really lower your car insurance as well so with this being the SEL trim it's not the greatest in terms of its uh, level according to the hierarchy but the SEL actually does a really really good job at providing value for a lower trim level uh, you can also turn on your features, turn your features on and off over here. So there's multiple ways to do it, but I'd rather just do everything um, through the center display. Uh, the screen is actually pretty nicely sized, and I don't like the fact that it is a laptop, but it it doesn't. It's not too bad. I'm, this is just the song it's been on, but it's ultimately pretty easy to use. You have your multiple modes here. If you ever left my side. We're going to avoid that for copyright reasons, <laughs> but yeah, you're able to set a bunch of presets on it. So this radio system is actually pretty gnarly, and uh, I do have two 12 volt power outlets here, a USB port and an aux cord. Uh, USB-C was not really available yet during the time that I purchased this, so your newer vehicles will have that. And this one does also have dual zone climate control. And one thing I did notice that I'm not really a fan of is that the auto, when it's on auto, I can't actually see what it's doing. Whereas in my partner's old Subaru, I was able to see kind of where the air was going, so on and so forth. So that's the only downfall I have about the climate system, but otherwise everything is great. This one does have two drive modes sport and regular and it also will hold the brake for you if you put it on auto hold and i love the fact that the the actual gear shifter it has a shift boot right there because dropping stuff in your shift console really really sucks so guys um this has been my one year review slash a little bit of an overview slash um video here moving video and i just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update on this tucson it's been an absolute gem and i'm hoping to get the other vehicle in here shortly unfortunately this subaru was in a really bad car accident and so it will not be with us anymore they actually did try to fix it the body shop did it was actually a rollover collision and um they tried to fix it but it didn't come back right and it ultimately just didn't feel safe after that so we ended up getting rid of it but the new vehicle will be on shortly i'm just going to get some videos of it and uh hopefully i'll see you guys soon and you guys be safe have a happy new year today is january 1st 2021 there was a little bit of a, a relief when that clock ultimately struck midnight so Hopefully this will be a good year for us. So you guys have a good day, uh, be safe. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, please let me know. Have a good one.